Back at Richmond International Raceway, getting ready for 250 laps tonight. A couple drivers in the field to look out for. Three JGR cars. Also, Brian Scott in the 11. His worst finish in the last six weeks is 15th. He's looking to keep that momentum going, gain some strength. There is also the driver who has been the best over the last six weeks. That's Eric Almirola. Tonight, he will start 16th. They're ready. Are you? Let's go trackside. As the Joint Services Color Guard from Fort Lee, Virginia, presents our nation's colors. Here to deliver tonight's invocation, please welcome from the Virginia Christian Alliance, Chaplain Joe Ellison. Let us pray. Eternal Father, we thank you tonight for this sport that we love so much, NASCAR. Lord, we thank you for your divine protection over each driver. Thank you, Lord, for protection. And Lord, tonight we thank you for America. We thank you for the many brave men and women who serve our country around the world. We ask you, Lord, not to forget them and bless them. And we give you all the praise and we'll give you all the glory. In Jesus' name we pray. Let all of God's people say amen. Please remain standing as singer, songwriter, and Nashville recording artist Celeste Kellogg performs our national anthem. Oh, say can you see by the dawn's early light What so proudly we hailed at the twilight's last gleaming Whose broad stripes and bright stars through the perilous vine or the ramparts we watched were so gallantly streaming and the rocket's red glare the bombs bursting in air gave proof Then our flag was still there. Oh, say does that star-spangled banner yet wave o'er the land? even more meaning this weekend as we remember what happened 10 years ago. You'll see lots of 9-11 tributes on the cars tonight as well as tomorrow night. On the racetrack, 250 laps. Brad Keselowski is your pole sitter and he will lead the field to green coming up after this break. NASCAR Nationwide Series at Richmond, presented by Jack Daniels Tennessee Whiskey. Live freely, drink sensibly, and in part by Kingsford Charcoal. Go to grilling.com and tell us where you're tailgating this weekend. Back at Richmond International Raceway, we're ready to go under the lights again for race 27 of this 34 race NASCAR Nationwide Series season. And it should be a good one because, of course, the title is on the line. And Marty Reed, if this week is any indication because of what happened last week, we are certainly in for a good one. Yes, uh, Nicole, and uh, hello again, everybody, and we're glad that you're with us as the weather is finally cooperating here at Richmond after a rough week in Atlanta, especially on the Sprint Cup side. Let's focus in on Reed Sorensen because earlier in the week on Sirius NASCAR Radio, he sounded like he was a defeated man. You heard what Brad said. He felt like right now he's uh, discounting his chances. I want to talk to you two 
What does this guy got to do to rebound and get refocused and get back into this? He's doing it right now, getting buckled back in this race car. That's the best medicine you can have. You know, as you have time outside the race car to think about things, how bad it is, is it impossible to overcome? Yeah, it's easy to sit and look at that. But if you look at the number, he's, numbers, he has eight races counting tonight to make up this 40 points. They have the race team and the driver to get this done. I'm sure his owner and, and crew chief have talked to him about it, and they're ready to go make things happen starting here tonight. And they've done a lot of great things. This Turner team has. They've done it together. And it was, hey, it was a mistake. I mean, Justin Algar made a mistake. And they just got to get through it, get past it, and uh, look at what we've got to do. He's got 40 points he's got to make up. He's got eight races to do it. It's not impossible. So it was a big task anyway. So just get to work and go racing. Let's show you just how possible it is for Reed Sorensen to get back into this. Let's go back just a little while ago when Reed was leading by 31 over Ricky Stenhouse Jr. That was after the Daytona race in July. Then look what happened in the next four races. Stenhouse Jr. ended up taking the lead by three. So it's just four races. He's got eight. How about the fact that we have got a very, very tough field tonight? You heard about the number of wins in the field, like just in the first couple of rows. Show you some uh, statistics that will back this up because this is what these guys are going to have to fight right there. Look at the average finish. And Harvick, Edwards, Kyle Busch, Brad Keselowski, Kenny Walsh, they've all won here. Well, it's going to be, you know, we do, we've got some great talent. It's going to be a great race, and we got a bunch of great short track drivers. You know, Kevin Harvick's coming in here with the, the best average finish, and I think he's going to have a great shot. Yeah, as I said before, as a driver, you only look at those stats when they benefit you. You don't worry about them if they're against you here. So these guys are just going to go out. It's going to be a great short track race here tonight. We've got about 10 seconds. Who's going to win this race tonight? DJ? Uh, I have to go with Kyle Busch. Me too. <laughs> <laughs> All right, well, let's go trackside to fire the engines and get this race underway. Race fans, it's time for the most famous words in motorsports. Please welcome Emmy-nominated writer and producer, Karen Hall. Drivers, start your engines! Get through right here, got me. Fire the hole. Got your good started up, bud. What is it, channel two here, Greg? Channel two for Scott, we are on channel one. So the engines come to life on the 43 cars out of the 49 that have made the field. And right, we had six that went home. We'll show you those in just a few moments. But as we get ready now, and you can see from high above, fans continuing to file in, there is the 32 of Reed Sorensen. Going to be a little confusing tonight because the 31 of his teammate Justin Allgaier is also in that Dollar General yellow. But he's our in-race reporter. And we'll talk to the man who is hit for grabs in the nationwide Dash for Cash when we come back. Remember back at Daytona in July, the first dash for cash for the nationwide money? Well, it was Reed Sorensen. He was the best of the group that was eligible. He picked up the $100,000 prize, went on to do it again at Iowa, and there he is pulling off. He is the only one that could potentially win the $600,000 bonus if he can win here and then again at Charlotte. All right, as Brad Keselowski comes uh, up as your pole sitter, it's his third pole this year, all in the last five races, 11th of his career. We've also had six DNQs. We'll put those drivers on the screen for you. It's one of the largest fields we had trying to make it here at uh, the NASCAR Nationwide Series this year. There are the six that did not make the field. Nobody going to be going to the rear. So let's uh, check in with our in-race reporter. How about it, DJ? Hey, Reed, Dale Jarrett, ESPN. you have a copy? Yes, sir. Got the lab clear. Hey, buddy. Uh, here's your third opportunity at this nationwide dash for cash. You've taken the $100,000 in these first two. Got enough to do it tonight? I think we got a real good shot. We uh, had a pretty good car in practice. Uh, didn't qualify very good, but I do think we have a good race car. And hope we make it three in a row here. These guys are, are pretty excited to, to have this opportunity from nationwide. So uh, we'll, we'll work hard on this Dollar General car all night. And... Hopefully be there at the end and uh, try to get that third one. All right, Reed, our next question comes from our mailbag, and Chris in Deerfield, New Hampshire asks, when racing at a short track like Richmond, how hard is it for a driver to remain calm and not lose their temper with their crew chief or another driver? Well, it can be tough sometimes. Uh, you know, tempers usually get a little bit worse here in short tracks just because you're uh, battling so hard each and every lap. And uh, you just got to take the big picture and... 
That's normally what I try to do and uh, stay calm and depend on my spotter and crew chief to keep me calm as well. All right, buddy. You stay calm. Have a good night. Now, Andy's going to talk to your crew chief, Trent Owens. Hey, Trent. Andy Petrie in the booth. You got us? Yeah, simple. Trent, this track was green when you guys started on it this morning and uh, did all your practicing before the cup cars got on it. Did uh, you think the track has gone through a big change with that, and now that it's gotten dark, uh, what do you expect? No, it could have, but, you know, even with our two practice sessions, I don't think it was enough to get it completely rubbered up. So, you know, our plan was to use that first practice, go with the temperature, hope the temperature is equal, and uh, set our car up around that way. So, like Reed said, uh, I think we got a good car here in the race, especially for the long run, so we'll see how it plays out. Okay, Trent, and tell uh, Reed to take it easy on the crew chief, man. We got feelings, too, you know. Good luck. Get the car. I hear you. <laughs> Big smile on Trent's face. Let's show you the rest of our onboards. We've got a slew of them for you. One with Elliot Sadler in the two car, then Ricky Stenhouse Jr., Danica Patrick. We've already talked to Reed, Kevin Harvick, Jason Leffler, Stephen Wallace, and Eric Almarola. Let's get the final updates from Pit Lane. And uh, Dave, you're up first. Marty, Kenny Wallace has been on the gas this year, and boy, does it show. Last year at this time, he was 17th in the points. Now, he is 7th in the points. Unfortunately, the last four races have not gone that well, and his average finish has been 25th. The four before that, his average finish was 8th. I talked to Kenny today about that. He said, we are a much better team than we've been showing lately, and we just need to stop the points bleeding. Perhaps he's got that started with a 5th place qualifying effort tonight. Dr. Jerry Punch? Well, 19-year-old Ryan Truex making only his second of six scheduled starts in the 20 car for Joe Gibbs Racing. Qualified 10th, but issues on the start. A moment ago, the car fired up and then shut off. They had to raise the hood and put a backup ignition box in that Toyota. And that means this young man, who already has limited experience here, will have to go to the rear and start dead last. Jamie. The young Trevor Bain is working with his crew chief, Chad Norris. Now just the third race together, and Chad told me today the team has already been hitting their stride. They were top four in both practice sessions and in qualifying, and they believe they will stay there tonight. Let's go to Vince Welch. Carl Edwards is good everywhere, always a threat to win, but their short track program has been missing its mark lately. So crew chief Mike Beam brought a brand new race car here to Richmond tonight. In fact, they were in the wind tunnel on Wednesday, had to rush to get it finalized and get it here to Richmond. Carl said it's fast, but the balance doesn't feel good. That's something Beam will have to work on in the race tonight if they're to win. Marty? All right, Vince, the pace car is pulling down, and we're getting ready to go, and it is up front, Brad Keselowski and Carl Edwards. As we go, here we come to the start. The Virginia 529 College Savings 250 is green. Keselowski picks up right where he left off in qualifying, out in front, side by side for second place. Yeah, we're just going to see how good that outside groove or that second groove, which nobody's really running today, is as Carl Edwards tries to battle Kyle Busch down the inside. 16 of Trevor Bain is fourth, right behind his teammate Carl Edwards. Then in fifth place it is Kenny Wallace. And there you see Ricky Stenhouse in sixth. Kyle really drove his car off down into turn three, but couldn't get back to the gas. That allowed, opened up the door for Edwards to go to the inside. Now try to take that second spot away. It's a real tricky racetrack. You see, coming off turn two, how tight it is. But then coming off turn four, even though it does open up, it seems like you've got cars that, all, that almost hit the wall all the way to the start finish line. You see Kyle Busch up there working that outside on Edwards. All this action goes on. We'll let you know that the uh, 71 of Matt Carter has taken it behind the wall. And also, Dennis Setzer is uh, getting service on pit road. They're putting four fresh tires on that car. Well, you can see how Kyle Busch really got a run on that second groove off of turn two. He's able to clear Carl Edwards. Looked like he was going to get a little piece of Brad Keselowski there. Dodge, Toyota, then two Fords in your top four. Just watching this line that Kyle Push is running. I'm not sure that he's really trying to pass Keselowski or if he's trying to work that second groove in. Carl's underneath him and gets through and takes over that second position. 
So bump the 18 back to third. Now, that 18 car really didn't practice that well, but boy, when it taped up for qualifying, he went right to the top of the charts and then qualified very well earlier today. Yeah, but they weren't racing in the sunlight that they had today, so I think that we're going to see a different car here tonight. They're usually pretty spot on when it comes time to race. It's like Jamie McMurray and James Finch is number one is on the move. That is a battle side by side with Stephen Wallace for the seventh spot on the racetrack. And there you see Elliot Sadler. He too is eligible for the nationwide dash for cash money. It is Sadler, Ricky Stenhouse Jr., Reed Sorensen, and Josh Wise. How about a battle for the lead? Here comes Carl Edwards side by side with the 22 of Keslowski. Yeah, normally this would be just a situation that bottom side Carl Edwards there. See a battle for that's oh. third, fourth, and fifth all together right here. Boy, Stenhouse and Trevor Bain got awfully close together. And here we go as a nose gets ahead for the 60. Can he close? And yes, he does. Yeah, it's kind of, yeah kind of what we expect is that bottom groove to be the, the dominant one here tonight. So Brad Keselowski led the first eight laps, and now Carl Edwards becomes our second race leader. Behind those two, it's Kyle Busch, Stenhouse, Bain, Kenny Wallace, McMurray, Wallace, Stephen Wallace, Elliot Sadler, and Jason Leffler. That's your top ten. We've knocked down ten of 250 laps here at the race at Richmond, presented by Jack Daniels. Beautiful sunset at Richmond International Raceway as we check our Goodyear track facts. We only had three cautions, if you remember, back at the race in April. Just 12 caution laps. So what jumps out at you guys? Well, I, think I always like to take a look at the, the corners and the banking, and that's what allows these drivers to carry the speed that you need through, through the center. But you're going to just try to be on the bottom of the racetrack of those corners throughout this entire race. Well, let's uh, reset it for you because Carl Edwards is in front of Brad Keselowski by just over half a second. Then Kyle Busch and Ricky Stenhouse Jr. is in fourth. Doc, what are you hearing from the sixth camp? Well, the points leader's crew chief, Mike Kelly, a moment ago, added some very special perspective in terms of the overall big picture. Listen in. Remember tonight, we're racing for a lot of different reasons, Ricky. We're racing for points first and mostly. We're racing for $100,000. Uh, we're racing for the memory of this Flight 93 and all these people that uh, they give give so much for us to do what we want to do. I want you to race hard, but race smart. Take care of your car. Remember, we get no points till lap 250. There is not a major league sport anywhere as patriotic as NASCAR. And tonight, so many of these teams are remembering those that sacrificed and made the ultimate sacrifice 10 years ago. Flight 93 among them. Guys? You're right, Doc. Uh, on the remembrances, the special paint schemes, uh, all in tribute to this uh, 10th anniversary of that tragic day. We've knocked down 19 of 250 laps. Ricky Stenhouse Jr. right now in control of that $100,000 dash for cash. As we drop farther back, the 32 and the 31. Reed Source and Justin Allgaier, 16th and 17th positions. And we told you they were both in the Dollar General livery. Reed right in front of Allgaier. Let me guess, I think Allgaier's going to give him lots of room tonight. I think you're right. I think he felt really bad about what happened in Atlanta. A little bit farther back in the field. Let's pick it up on uh, Ryan Truex. Remember, he had the issue at the very beginning of the race. Had to start at the back of the field, and he has really made some progress. Look at where he is there by lap 20 up to 21st position. Now, this is what happened before the start. You can see a crew member there getting a, a, an extra ignition box ready to put in the car. They have that on the dash right there. They'll replace it and get him going. Well, let's check in with Dr. Jerry Punch. What's the latest you're hearing on that 20 car? Well, you, you said it, Marty. From 42nd to 20th in 20 laps. He has gained 22 positions. And remember now, he's just 19 years old, making his, his 12th start of the year. Very inexperienced, but incredibly composed, given the fact they had a problem where the car just cranked up and then shut off completely. Now, how'd they fix it? To show you exactly what they did, let's go to our Craftsman Tech Garage at Tim Brewer. Thanks, Doc. The cars are equipped with two ignition boxes. How we 
control that is with a switch. But these guys are very weight conscientious at these short tracks, so you probably didn't have a one box in there, so they had to replace it. But when you have the boxes, by flipping the switch from A to B, you change more than the boxes themselves. Out here is the ignition, the distributor in the front of the engine. But we change that switch. We can actually change both leads and the distributor. By changing the leads in the distributor, we change the pickup. So we can change the entire system by changing that if we're not that weight conscientious. Marty? And as you finish up, the 20 goes around the 40 of Josh Wise. And uh, Josh Wise, the fourth competitor in that dash for cash. He qualified after that great run in Iowa in the seven car. And uh, he's not really much of a contender in that 40. Even he admits it as that, that car, just a, a low-budget operation. But he's given it yeoman's effort. Right behind him in the 62 is Michael Lynette. Where is our race leader? Well, Carl Edwards has knocked down 26 laps, and his lead now over Brad Keselowski is one second. And this is the 300th time Carl Edwards has led a nationwide series race in his career. NASCAR now presented by 5-Hour Energy. You'll see it tomorrow at 9 a.m. Eastern on ESPN2. And then our Sprint Cup Series from here at Richmond tomorrow night, 7 Eastern on ABC. NASCAR now tomorrow, 11 Eastern on ESPN2. And the Nationwide Series next stop at Chicago next Saturday, 3 o'clock Eastern on ESPN2. That was Carl Edwards getting a lap or putting Danica Patrick a lap down. That means there's 27 cars on the lead lap out of this race. Mark Green. Of Riggs, Chase Miller, Brian Keselowski, three other cars are off at this moment. Let's get an update on the seven, Doc. Well, Danica Patrick just going to lap down. You see some of the cars going by, Brad K going by. But talking to Tony Uri Jr., he was talking to Danica before she got in the car and explained to him, this is a night where it's all about learning. This is an investment for the future, like putting money in the bank, waiting a year, waiting for it to grow and develop. Tonight for you, it's about learning at Richmond, first time here in a stock car, developing the line, understanding what the tires and track are going to do. Don't worry about who goes by you or where you finish. Good advice from Tony Jr., but awfully tough for Danica Patrick, who's a very, very competitive race car driver, having to go down a lap this early. And as you finish up, Doc, three more cars are now officially out of the race. Jeff Green, Tim Andrews, and Dennis Setzer. There is Kyle Busch. He is going around Danica now. Kyle in third. He is 1.9 seconds behind the race leader in fourth. It is Ricky Stenhouse Jr. Trevor Bain rounds out the top five. Yeah, just like they were saying there, this is a learning night for Danica. This is different type racing than what she's seen at some of the other places. But I think before this night's over, she'll get a much better feel for what this is about, how aggressive you can and need to be to run these fast laps at this racetrack in race conditions. When she ran Indy cars here five times, four of them, she was in the top ten. And in those cars, you could flat foot it around here. Obviously, you can't do that in a stock car. <laughs> Checking back in on uh, Roush Fenway Racing is uh, there is Ricky Stenhouse Jr. approaching Danica. And here comes the 16 of Trevor Bank getting around Blake Cook in the 81. Kenny Wallace, he is the man running in sixth place. Kenny got another good run going here. This is his 34th start here in the Nationwide Series at Richmond. Well, I've been watching his monitor. He's had uh, the fastest lap on the track uh, quite a few times uh, the last 10 laps. We've had the leaders in traffic, a lot of traffic, so that could be part of it, but he does have a fast car. And doing a nice job here at the start of the race of keeping himself in contention, not putting himself in harm's way, so to speak, to, to start with, but uh, right here with the two Roush cars. And he's got almost a second lead over that car, the one of Jamie McMurray. As uh, McMurray shown in seventh position, a full second ahead of the eighth-place car, Stephen Wallace. And there you see Steven as he comes into view. Seems Steven has some really good, solid runs here at this racetrack in years past. It's like tonight's another one of those solidly up in the eighth position right now. How about the battle for 17th? That's right, the 20 of Ryan Truex. This young man is making a statement here coming from the back of the field, and he is side-by-side -side with Justin Allgaier. On the right side of your screen, the battle for fourth as Trevor Bain gets around his teammate, Ricky Stenhouse Jr. I guess 
really shouldn't be surprised in that Martin or Ryan Truex move. He finished a career best eighth back here in the April race. I'm just impressed at how quickly he was able to get here. Yeah, he disposed of a lot of cars, and uh, of course, a lot of those were, you know, some of the slower cars in the field, but he's still doing a nice job getting up to people like Justin Allgaier and, and making his way forward. So he gets a caution flag to get himself called up. We'll see exactly how much he has for tonight. Carl Edwards right now has a one-second lead over Brad Keselowski at our race here at Pre Richmond, presented by Jack Daniels, as we've knocked down 45 of 250 laps. Welcome back to the Nationwide Series here at Richmond, the Virginia 529 College Savings 250. Make sure to go to NASCAR.com for all your latest NASCAR information. You're looking at our race leader, a race presented by Jack Daniels, knocking down 52 laps so far. Carl Edwards has led 43 of them. We've had two leaders. Brad Keselowski has led eight. He started on pole. Ricky Carmichael there in the 30 has just gone a lap down. To give you an idea, he is running in 25th position. So only 24 cars still on the lead lap. Multiple cars are out of this race. Green, Long, Andrew, Setzer, Mark Green, Scott Riggs, Chase Miller, Brian Keselowski. Behind uh, Edwards, you see Brad Keselowski and Kyle Busch. Kyle going around the 30 now. Behind them, Trevor Bain, Ricky Stenhouse, Kenny Wallace, and Jamie McMurray. And that brings us up to the eighth place. And why don't we go up to speed with Nationwide Insurance? How about it, Jamie Little? Well, Stephen Wall's having a pretty good run in the 66. He started seventh tonight. That's his best start ever here at Richmond in 10 starts. He says right now the car just needs front grip. He can't roll through the middle the way he wants to. He's hanging in there, though, as he's trying to get that one spot back. Vince? Running ninth is the two car of Elliott Sadler. They were 27th in practice today, but crew chief Ernie Cope said, don't worry about it. The car's turning in good, and it's getting good drive off the corner, and that's what counts. So far, hasn't been too much of a problem. Car's pretty good, although Elliott says he'd like a little more right rear grip. That's what he's fighting with right now. The 38 of Jason Leffler running in 10 says the car's just a little bit too tight in the center, hearing that all up and down pit lane today. Of course, a big run from Leffler would be right on time for Jason, the veteran here at the Nationwide Series. As it was noted earlier from the guys upstairs, was told earlier this month and confirmed this weekend that he has been told he should look for another ride next year. Leffler should land on his feet somewhere. Jamie? Well, behind him is Kevin Harvick, and after the news has finally come out that he and his wife have sold KHI, their race cars, and the trucks as well. He was walking lighter. He was relieved and smiling until he got in the race car. Here's his radio. 345. Eight lap times. This is the biggest piece of I've ever driven. I'm just trying to make it survive. First tire has got to blow out at some point. As bad as the push is getting in the corner. For four hours of practice this morning as well. Yeah, that's been going on for about 57 laps now out of 57. And he's saying the car is fundamentally messed up. He's telling his crew chief exactly what changes he wants to come up. Dave? Jamie, if you ask Mike Bliss, he'd probably say his car was fundamentally pretty good right now. He's picked up six positions since the stop drop of the green flag. Just checked in with his crew. They say the car is just a little bit loose in. But other than that, pretty good for Mike. Vince? Next in line is the 70 of David Strimmy running this week with ML Racing, a team that small one-car team based out of Warsaw, Indiana, but has the reputation of being able to do a lot with a little. And, oh, how about that? Strimmy is letting it slide out wide. But they've got something with this combination. Strimmy really likes running with this group. David Strimmy, an accomplished driver, better than he gets from an opportunity standpoint a lot of times, but having a good go at it here in the early going, Dave. Brian Scott has slid back a couple of spots since his opening uh, starting spot of 12th place. Crew Chief Kevin Kidd told me there's nothing he sees wrong with the car right now. He's okay with his lap times. They're just trying to recover. Brian told me before the race he was excited because they put the winning
same setup from Denny Hamlin's car that won this April here at this track. He was hoping for a really good night. Dr. Jerry Punch. And what a run by the 19-year-old. There comes the 20 car, Ryan Truex, all the way back from 42nd starting spot. Now, the young man has only been here once before, and he is driving the wheels off that car, literally. In fact, so much that crew chief Adam Stevens said, hey, Ryan, listen, I know you're accustomed to 100 lap races, but this one's 250. You got to take it easy. We got lots of laps and lots of times left to go. This young man coming in a hurry. Great story for Ryan Truex as he has moved into the top 15 after having to go to the back of the field. There you saw Sorensen Allgaier. They're still running 17th and 18th. Everybody is chasing Carl Edwards here at our race at Richmond presented by Jack Daniels. Back at Richmond, we've just seen our first caution of the day. That's Blake Cook out on the track. Trying to get the car back going. And Rusty, you were kind of calling this as, as, as it coming because of the brake rotors. Yeah, you I've can seen see a, it's glowing. Yeah, we're seeing a lot of cars out there with the really glowing brake rotors. I'm concerned we're, we're going to start seeing some pop tires here pretty soon, Brad. It was looking rough. Yeah, tires are heating up pretty bad. You can see Blake uh, got out in the grass there and knocked that splitter down. And let's see what happened. He comes off the corner. Eric Almoroto gets in a little four wheel drift there and gets into his left rear quarter panel and sends him down into the. Uh, the grass here, so just a, a mistake. Eric uh, was racing hard. It looks like, like I say, he got a little four-wheel slide and couldn't, couldn't stop himself. Cook was in 29th when it happened. This is from onboard the 88s of El Marola. Yeah, Eric's just got a lot of bite. And up off a of turn two, you're to four, you're on the throttle real hard, letting that car run up. And he just flat let it run up too far. Gosh, they got into the side 81 car, and oh, Gosh, into no. the inside wall, and that costs money that right bust there. Bust everything, tie rod ends, ball joints, everything's busted. So yeah, that's going to be a, a tough fix right there, Russ. This is a break for drivers who get to come down pit road right now. As we were saying, it goes back to the brake rotors. They were glowing. They need new tires. Yeah, it's a good time for these guys to come in and make some pit stops and uh, make some adjustments and get going. Here we go. Here they come. Carl Edwards is first. Dave? Kyle Busch's car. He gives up a fourth position. They'll make a track bar adjustment for a car that needs lateral grip across the rear and is a tick tight in the middle of the corner. It's the 60 of Carl Edwards, bottom left of your screen, says it's pretty good everywhere, but just a tick tight in the center. So they're going to make an air pressure adjustment in four tires. Jamie? Trevor Bain, upper right-hand side, gained one position, doing a great job. Says he's loose off. Four tires, check bar down one round. Clean the grill and pull some tape, Doc. Right lower corner, Brad K saying the 60 car finishes the middle of the corner better and drives away from it. He's driving away from him right now. He barely beats him off pit road. Air pressure change only for the 22. Race off pit road. You can see it's uh, Carl Edwards getting the advantage over Brad Keselowski. Everybody taking four tires. Stephen Wallace, though, gained two spots. Fans get all the scoop on what goes on in the pits during a 14.5 point second pit stop. That's the Craftsman virtual pit stop. Here we go. Race off pit road. Yeah, Carl, Carl Edwards. Edwards. Yeah, Keselowski. 60 crew, obviously a little bit excited about this one. Did a great job getting him off pit road. Excellent pit stop for that 60 crew. Keeps him out front. Of course, as we were saying, fans, you can get all the scoop on what goes on in these pit stops during a 14 five-second stop with the Craftsman virtual pit stop. Check it out by going to ESPN.com and search virtual pit stop. Jeremy Clements is the leader right now by virtue of not stopping. Carl Edwards will line up second when we... Two coaching legends lead their programs on ABC tomorrow afternoon. Nick Saban's number three ranked Crimson Tide head to Happy Valley for a tough road test against Joe Paterno's number 23 Lindy Lions. College football presented by Buffalo Wild Wings. It's on ABC Saturday at 3.30 Eastern, 12.30 Pacific. This could be a bit of an extended caution because while all the other stuff was going on, the 40 of Josh Wise, one of our four contenders in the dash for cash, had something go wrong in the engine compartment. He, Andy, you thought it might be an oil line, something like that, but this well, was the net result. See that or blown engine, it just emptied the oil tank completely down the back straightaway, and then when he pulled down pit road, left a big puddle in his pit stall. Either way, it looks like they're done. So Josh's chances for the $100,000 is gone. And that's uh, our over-the-wall guy, Rick Yeomans. He didn't know he was going to be in for a track meet tonight, but he is. 
Yeah, and that's Rick breathing heavy, and you'd be breathing heavy, too, if you were pushing 3,400 pounds of race car. Stay with us. We'll come back. We'll reset it for you. Go back to green flag racing. Green flag racing. We liked those last two cars before the one hit the wall and the other had engine problems here at our NASCAR Nationwide race at Richmond International Raceway, presented by Jack Daniels. We've knocked down 76 laps. Danica Patrick is in the position to get a wave around, but there was some confusion as uh, let's take you back and show you exactly what happened. Notice the pace car. And there goes Danica. listening on the radio. I don't know what I was supposed to do. Nobody said anything. Yeah, we don't. You can't ever pass the pace car unless you're the lucky dog or a wave around. A wave around, you got to, we're not the wave around. I don't even know where he was. I didn't even see him. I just slowly followed the cars in front of me. That's exactly what you did. You followed them. We wasn't supposed to. They took off. Just, we got, we got to pay attention. And... Well, she is getting the wave around and she's taking it now. Uh, it wasn't quite time to do that and they were actually putting uh, the lucky dog around the pace car she was following him and Robert Richardson is also taking the wave around Eric McClure was the lucky dog so Danica did not make the stop and uh, she's shown in 24th position and we'll get her back on the lead lap let's reset it for you as we've got Carl Edwards he selected the inside as uh, there you see or actually I should say the leader right now shown as Jeremy Clements he, he was. He made a, yeah, a late He did pit make stop. a pit stop. Yeah, let's correct that. He did come in. So it is Edwards, Keslowski, Bain, Kyle Busch, Stephen Wallace, and Ricky Stenhouse Jr. And we're back to green flag racing. Well, Brad Keslowski did not get going on that start. Boy, look at Kyle on the high side. Come Whoa, Keslowski. Keslowski has problems and has slid up to the wall. Our pole sitter. He hit it, too. And he is dropping fast. Oh, big crash. Big and crash a big crash, the 38 of Jason Leffler and the 33 of Kevin Harvick. So our winner here, a year ago in this event, has contact. Second caution is out. And for those cars that took the wave around, it's big break. Move. I don't see any fluid coming out of it. Look at there. That was a battle for ninth position. Doesn't look like there's much damage. Whoa, and Leffler's not happy with Harvick. That one's got a ton of damage there. They're going to have to go behind the wall. Okay, so we've got two separate incidents. Let's take you back first and show you what happened to our pole sitter. There's Brad Keselowski. That thing just did not offer to turn. And now the second incident. This is the battle for ninth. Harvey just gets right in the back of Leffler and turns him around. And then let's go on board with Kevin. Inside, inside. Still inside, inside. Top of three, top of three. Still three tight. Still three. Got one in the wall up high. Two wide, inside, inside. Still inside. No caution, no caution. Inside, inside corner. I think Harvick might not have liked Spin. being put three wide on the outside in turn one. Yeah, I don't think there's any doubt what he didn't appreciate that. I don't think he planned on becoming part of this problem, but I think he was sending a message there for sure. Well, and it's bad news for Jason Leffler because remember at the beginning of the broadcast, uh, we talked Take about the, the garage, guys, and we'll work on it. It's a good time Leffler tire on. We'll go to the garage here. He has been told to go ahead and seek another ride for next year. And uh, so it looks like tonight is not going to be his night. And I don't really know that Jason Leffler did anything wrong on that restart. There was a hole there, you know, car on the bottom, one up the top. There was plenty of room for him to go in there. But like Harvick did take exception to it. Well, the 33 is coming down pit road, as is the 7 of Danica Patrick, the 14 of Eric McClure. How about it, Jamie? Well, Kevin Harvick just came on the radio and said, I don't know what the heck happened there. I was going 10 miles per hour faster than him. I don't know if he checked up or what, but the crew has been looking at the car, and they say they don't see any damage, but just to be uh, safer than sorry, they brought it down to put new tires on it. 
Doc, what do you have at your end of pit road? Brad Kay came in right side tires. They pulled the right front fender away, taking a look at the car. Still talking to the crew chief, Todd Gordon. Brad said he, he went into turn one, and the car just absolutely would not turn. He turned in the car, went up across the racetrack, and he nailed the wall. I said, guys, I'm sorry. They pulled the fender out, and they're checking it for damage. Apparently, the toe in is fine. Brad said the steering wheel is straight. They put right side tires on it, and apparently, he's got pretty good clearance. So, uh, hopefully, minimal to no damage. All right, thanks for the update, Doc. We can tell you Timmy Hill gets the uh, lucky dog in the number 15, so he'll get back on the lead lap. That'll give us a total of 24 cars on the lead lap. Let's go back and take another look at the 33-38 deal. According to Harvick on the radio, he didn't mean to do that. But <laughs> yeah. yeah, and Leffler, you know, could have been right in front of Leffler that he had to slow up quite a bit, so... You know, Harvick not not anticipating that got into the back of him. So, well, let's uh, check in uh, with the man who we wanted to talk to before all this uh, recent round of uh, well, Demons Collision Derby took place. Uh, Josh Wise is out of the race. How about it, Jamie? That's right. He was one of the nationwide dash for cash drivers racing the entire time tonight. First caution comes out. Now all of a sudden it's chaos back here. Josh, what happened to you guys? Yeah, I, I think they just found out oil pump broke. So uh, it's unfortunate. The car, we were actually going to be pretty good there. And uh, we were picking a few guys off. And um, just got to thank Cajun Industries, Ken Jacobs, everyone there. And uh, everyone at Key Motorsports for putting this together for me to come try to win this deal. And uh, it was a good effort. But uh, it's a shame it ends this way. Always a good attitude. Josh Wise will be back in the 40 next weekend, and uh, Jason Leffler's made his way back here, and we'll get word with him in just a moment, Marty. And you know, DJ, you made an interesting observation as we take a look at the dash for cash positions. Uh, and go ahead, tell us. Yeah, uh, Brad Keselowski could have possibly gotten his right side tires. He didn't get started good, spun the tire, and then it wouldn't turn. So he might have got in some of that oil and got him on the right sides. That could have been his problem. There you see where they are in the field. We're going back to green flag racing. Kyle Busch had the low line. He took it there. Edwards, Bain, Stenhouse, Stephen Wallace. tell you what as you watch the 18 car during practice they were not happy about 14th on the speed chart in the first practice but you give that team just a little bit of time and look what happens it looks like they've made a good adjustment they got some speed out of the car here initially we'll see how this goes on one i'm impressed with right there trevor bain in the 16 car running third he was one of the faster cars on the racetrack at the end of that first uh, run Got a battle for the lead now as Carl Edwards has got down low and is underneath the 18 of Kyle Busch. And it looks like Carl, once those tires came back to life, he's going back to the front. Looks like Carl maybe had just a little less air in his tires there. Took a lap or two more for him to get going than it did Kyle. Our fourth lead change between four different drivers. Got 20 cars up to eight now. Ryan Truex is doing a great job. While all this action goes on, the, between the 31 and the 11, as they are battling for the ninth position, Jamie, you've uh, caught up with Jason Leffler? Yes, he is out of the car while his uh, team goes to work trying to fix this car and get you back out. Kevin Harvick came on the radio and said, I don't know what he was doing if he was checking up. I was going 10 miles per hour faster. What was it from your side? Uh, he just ran in the back of me, so got me. Not real happy. Great clip. Stevie was pretty good. Um, guys are doing a good job. We had a fairly decent night going, and now it's ruined, so... Um, it's nice BS, but go come around. Think you'll go back out? Go back out? Yeah, we'll get it fixed. All right, he's going back out with a smile on his face, Marty. Uh, and I have a feeling there might be a mission in mind. We've seen Jason in action before when he feels like he's been wronged. Yeah, and he was right. He ran 10th pretty much that whole first run that we had before that caution. So he was having a pretty solid night running inside the top 10. These two have been side-by-side side for a number of laps now. And right behind him, Mike Bliss with a good run going. Eric Almirola, and there is Reed Sorensen, our points leader. Or I should say, the man trying to get back to the points lead. He's 49 right now as they run. He is the leader for the dash for cash because he's already won twice there, picking up 200 grand. Well, I'm sure Reed's not very happy that they're not running better than this. I think talking to him there before the race, they expected a lot more from this race car tonight. Well, Brian Scott 
and Justin Allgaier, and I think there might be a few of those cars behind him. What do you think, guys, that, that are actually faster, but they can't get around either one of them? Yeah, and that's Richmond Racing. That's the position you get yourself in. You just have to try to be patient in this situation. A lot of times you try to make too many things happen, then you start tearing stuff up. Well, let's get an update on Justin Allgaier. How about it, Dave Burns? Well, both he and the 11, it's no surprise, they're running side by side. Their cars were both difficult to turn in the middle of the corner. They changed four tires. They both made a wedge adjustment, so there they go, one by one. <laughs> and there you see Allgaier's cycle. That battle has cooled, at least for the moment, as we have knocked down now 93 laps officially of the 250 scheduled for tonight. And the man that's up front again is Carl Edwards by three tenths of a second over Kyle Busch. Trevor Bain with a Ford. Ricky Stenhouse Jr. is teammate in another Ford. Kenny Wallace still in the top five. Welcome back to the NASCAR Nationwide Series of Richmond, Virginia, the 529 College Savings 250. Make sure to go to NASCAR.com for all your latest NASCAR information. Race leader right now is Carl Edwards by four-tenths of a second over the 18 of Kyle Busch. Trevor Bain is third. Ricky Stenhouse fourth. Kenny Wallace with a great run in fifth. And nephew Steven in sixth. Let's get an update on that uh, race leader. How about it, Vince? Well, they've been pretty happy with the 60 for Carl Edwards. Still a little snug in the center. That's uh, the air pressure adjustment they made on that first stop to try to help it out. But remember, they were really good here in April. Sat on the pole, led 43 laps. But Mike Beam said he was way too aggressive on the setup on that day. The car faded, and then eventually they ran him out of fuel. He said today, he said, our setup is better, our car is better, and I'm not going to run him out of fuel. I guarantee you that. So, uh, so far, so good for Carl Edwards, the leader, Dave. Vince, Kyle Busch trying to catch him, and the booth has commented tonight on how it didn't look like the greatest car in practice. Jason Ratcliffe actually told me, he said, according to the stop box, we were not where we needed to be, but based on the feedback I was getting from Kyle, I felt like we could be a race-winning car tonight. It'd be Kyle's fourth victory here. Right now, Kyle's saying, I think I have a little bit too much rear steer in the car on exit, but they made small changes so far trying to catch that 60. Those two continue as first and second place. And as we drop back farther in the field, there is Brad Keselowski, our pit or pole winner. And he was one of our four race leaders, leading a total of eight laps. And, and now going underneath uh, the 81 of Blake Cook as he has made repairs to his damaged car that hit the inside of the front straightaway wall. And there from on board, Danica Patrick. And Danica's got her car going a lot better this run. She got that wave around, came in, got tires. Tripped, running down Brad Keselowski. Brad's car might be a little bit hurt from that wall contact. But the fact remains, yeah, she, but the fact remains, she's better off than she was in that first. And I think that's just experience. Probably a little adjustment on the car. Doing a pretty nice job here. Still on the lead lap right now. In fact, there are a total of 24 cars on the lead lap. Total of 11 cars are now listed out of this race. We're talking to Tony Urey Jr. He set the goal for this team as a top 15 tonight. Right now, she's on the lead lap, 22nd place. So keep your eyes posted for that one. Let's move back up a little bit farther forward in the field between the 16. Trevor Bain and his teammate Ricky Stenhouse Jr. Yeah, I go up here to drivers that grew up racing on short tracks and things and sliding cars around yeah, and in stock carts and, and a lot different. So back to Danica, this is still a learning process, knowing how much you can slide a car around in a situation like this on a shorter track where you're not carrying quite the speed, even though there is uh, some pretty high speeds here. These two guys doing a fantastic job up inside the top five right now. Well, and it's been a good year for Roush Fenway Racing. They've had all three cars finish in the top five twice already in this year. This could potentially be a third. Now only Kyle Busch has got them separated right now. Well, there is your top five as we've knocked down 109 of the 250 laps here at Richmond. Our race presented by Jack Daniels. Back at Richmond, we are 115 laps into this 250 miler. Danica Patrick is in the field today, right now. 
She's running on the lead lap in 20 seconds. A little bit of issues, though. She had some confusion past the pace car, but she's back on track now. Yeah, and she's okay right now. She's 20 seconds. She's still in the lead lap. Made a little mistake right there. Kind of a rookie mistake right there, Brad, but yeah. she'll be okay. Yeah. We go to lap 79. We saw Brad Keselowski, our pole sitter. Either got into some oil or the right front tire got a little hot and he got up into the wall. Then we had Kevin Harvick getting to Jason Leffler all on the same incident on the same lap. And you see Leffler there is not too happy with uh, Kevin Harvick. Of course, coming into this race, it's all about the points battle. Ricky Stenhouse Jr. is the leader. And right now, he's running up front in fourth. Elliott Sadler is chasing him both on the track and in points. Yeah, both these guys are running good right now. Ricky Stenhouse, like you said, she, he's still leading the points. 16 points ahead of Elliott Sadler. Elliott's a little bit off tonight. His lap times aren't really as good as they should be. But they need to stay working on that number two car. But Trevor Bain right there in the 16, he's been a pleasant surprise up there running the second position right now. Challenging teammate Carl Edwards. Yeah, all the Roush cars are up front. Carl Edwards is first, Bain second, Stenhouse is fourth. They're all in the top five running really, really well right now. Also can't forget about Kyle Busch in third. But Doc, what do you have more on that six car? Interesting, Nicole. You know, Ricky Stenhouse has run so well on three-quarter mile racetracks. He's won at both times they've gone to Iowa, a track that was basically patterned after this racetrack. But they didn't bring the Iowa car here. Why? Because in Iowa, it was five weeks ago. They have made so many aero gains on their chassis. This car here had the latest and greatest updates. That's why they wanted to use this car here. They didn't have time to fix the Iowa car. That's how quickly the landscape is changing here in the Nationwide Series. Okay, and how about that fifth place car, Doc? Kenny Wallace, the guy who's run more nationwide races here than any other driver. He had this to say on the radio moments ago. Really good. We're just getting beat because I'm really good. This is good, Scotty. It's really good. Making that call out to Scotty Zipidelli. I did check with Scott to see what he meant by we're just getting beat because I'm really good. Scott just smiled and laughed. He said, I think that's just because Kenny's all wound up because he knows he's got a really good race car tonight. Nicole? One of the other guys we were talking about coming into this race was Reed Sorensen. He lost 20 points last week in an incident with his teammate on the track in Atlanta. And right now, he hasn't really made much way up into the field. He's, he's running 15. Yeah, we, as we talked about earlier, I think it's affected he and his teammate Justin Allgaier. Neither one of these guys have run extremely strong tonight. And, uh, Reed seems to be going backwards now. They've got a lot of adjustability in the car. Heard crew chief Trent, Trent Owens talking earlier about, you know, hopefully getting it to the end, getting a good last run and having a good finish. But right now, they're struggling to to get up they're losing points he's losing points he's back 51 now yeah. when coming into the day he was uh behind 40th the one thing you'll notice on the grills tonight that that's different from what we saw at the big track at atlanta a week ago there's a lot of tape on these grills just one of the differences we're seeing yeah you know generally you would see it the other way around or cold that there'd be more tape on the bigger tracks because they're running more mile per hour to cool them but here it's pretty cool temperatures out tonight so they got a lot of tape on the grill they want that down force they want that front end to stick real good so they can drive up off the corner although the brakes are open pretty decent not a lot because brakes are a very big thing here like tim brewer told us early if they get too hot brad they'll blow the tires out yeah they'll blow the beat that right front tire if you're not careful 125 laps complete which means we are halfway here at richmond carl edwards is your leader he's being run down by his teammate in the 16 trapper bain we'll have more from richmond in just a second Sunday morning's ESPN2 lineup has just gotten a lot better. Check it out because at 10 a.m. we got outside the lines. At 10.30, it's ESPN, the sports reporters. Followed at 11 a.m. with Sports Center, and then 11.30 with Fantasy Football Now. Sunday mornings, getting better on ESPN2. Back here at Richmond International Raceway, we've completed 132 laps of the 250 scheduled. You're looking at race leader Carl Edwards. He puts Danica Patrick down a lap again. She is the first car a lap down in 21st position. Right behind Danica is the 16 of Trevor Bain. Let's get an update from Jamie Little. Well, first and foremost, he is bad fast, and they have made the right adjustments on this car. It has been good. It's been minimal adjustments, and that's what Trevor's been saying. Now, here's basically the story on him. He kicked off the year winning the Daytona 500. Then he suffered from an illness, had to get out of his nationwide car, and ever since then, as the team told me, he's lost his confidence. His teammates are winning, and he is not. All of a sudden, he has a new crew chief. They ran great last week, worked their way through the field.
field led some laps and look at him. They knew he was going to be good tonight. He was good all day in practice and qualifying, and he's not giving up. Marty? Chad Norris, that new crew chief, and boy, he is right behind him. And then there is Brad Keselowski as Keselowski now goes a lap down after smacking the wall on that restart. And it obviously has left him with a, a car that's ill handling. Let's get more on that 22. How about it, Doc? Yeah, Marty hit the wall after being our pole sitter and early leader hit the wall in lap 86. And then they thought the car had minimal to no damage, but when he restarted 21st and couldn't move it beyond 20th, this was the communication the moment ago on the radio. Probably lost some camber and got some toe out with that hit. We'll get it fixed. Just give me what you can. Therefore, quite honestly, I did not hit that hard. You know. Either that or I've taken so many hits later I can't tell. Yeah, he's referring to that 100-mile-an-hour head-on impact into a concrete wall back in early August at Road Atlanta, which injured him significantly. And they were saying that the damage uh, to the driver is minimal, but they're concerned about the toe-in and the camber, and they need a caution flag to fix it. How do you fix it? Well, let's go to the Craftsman Tech Garage and Tim Brewer. Thanks, Doc. When you change the direction of the front wheels, you have to come in, and the tie rod in is located right here at the front of the tire. Now, the camber, you're going to actually have to adjust it up here by unbolting this and changing the shim right here. But the tie rod, it's basically a turnbuckle. It's left and right threaded, so by manipulating, you can make it longer or shorter, but to change the direction of that tire is pointed, that controls the, the handling characteristics of the car. But Brad, he's a smart, pretty smart guy. He knows what he wants for the towing. Marty? Uh, Tim, we got a crash on the uh, track here as Danica Patrick got into Brad Keselowski. It looked like maybe Brad was going to be able to save it. You could see Danica locking up the brakes and just carrying too much speed got into Keselowski and brings out our third caution. Keselowski was running 20th. Let's go back and take another look. Yeah, Brad is struggling right now with that car after that contact. Danica she really wants the spot. She drives in just a little too hard, locks that left front up. Yeah, I think she thought that she was going to get the spot, and so she drove it on in, and maybe Brad didn't give her quite as much room as she thought she needed, and she locked it up at that point in time. Let's, Let's see here. Yeah, Brad was just holding it out, and I think Hello. she Hello. thought that that spot was there. Come on, keep coming there. Keep coming there. Realized that it was going to be tighter, and she tried to stay off of him by hitting the brakes a little too hard and slid up into Brad. I was really getting concerned with all of this about Brad, seeing a lot of brake dust on those front front wheels that maybe he was going to blow a tire out. All right, I got a flat spot. I slid up. That was my fault. Yeah, it's four. I got in there and just uh, got on the brakes, and it just slid up. So Danica takes uh, full responsibility for that one, and uh, there will be no lucky dog because Brad Keselowski was in the lucky dog position. Dave Burns. Kyle Busch fell from first to third on that run, and really just minor tweaks to try to get the car back. A little bit of track bar, a little bit of wedge. I believe the car is just a little bit too tight for him to make up ground. Vince. Carl Edwards, bottom left of your screen. They discussed the chassis adjustment but decided against it. Just an air pressure adjustment, a tick snug in the center. Jamie? The 16 of Trevor Bain says he's a lot better, and the grip is better, but he's gotten tighter through the center. Four tires, track bar down a half round, wedge, and Sunoco, Doc. One round down right rear, Stenhouse, four tires. Sunoco gas topping it off. Great pit stop by the UPS Cup crew. Hitting the sixth car here for the first time, and they'll be here the rest of the year, guys. And the race off pit road, the big winner was Kevin Harvick. So ever since he had the uh, incident with the 38 of Leffler, Harvick's actually come forward rather than going back. We'll reset it for you when we come back to Richmond. Under our third caution here at the NASCAR Nationwide Series event at Richmond International Raceway, and a lot of action on pit road, especially involving Trevor Bain's crew in the number 16. Came in in second. Yeah, but unfortunately not good guys. See, he gets a little close to Carl Edwards guys here who pretty acrobatic. Let's check in with Jamie Little. Bad pit stop here. Watch the front tire changer. Right front. He's squatting down. Cannot pull the tire up. This is Cesar Villanueva, and he has been solid all year until now. Had the issue. Dropped seven positions, and we're back to green, guys. 
Kyle Busch, Carl Edwards up front, then Elliott Sadler, Ricky Stenhouse, Kenny Wallace, the top five. Trevor Bain restarts in ninth and has dropped back to tenth. Oh, trouble. Big crash up in the corner, the 11 of Brian Scott, 62 of Michael Annette. And it's the 11 of Scott that got the worst of it. 88 just never stopped for the corner. The 88 would be Eric Almirola, and that is the 11 radio. Well, he killed, that one. absolutely killed. Our fourth caution. Michael Nett able to continue. Let's go back and see if we can sort this out. Well, these restarts are really tight. Always have been on these short tracks. See the 11 car there coming into the corner now. He does get a tap for sure. Wow. Big hit. Eric Almirola. Get breaking. Stay low. Just stay low. Just stay low. Caution is out. Talk. It's almost like there's a little bit of a stack up right there of those cars getting in the corner. Yeah, that's uh, Michael Annette just seemed, I mean, I'm sorry. Uh, Almirola. Yeah, it looked like he just didn't anticipate things slowing down when you're you're under the you know just on a restart here you have to anticipate that things are going to be a little slower getting in there than than actual speed most of the time so well see brian scott not very happy with him yeah he was running ninth at the time and boy he is furious with eric almirola and here's maybe the reason why you look at his last group of races in fact from eighth place back in charlotte he has not cracked the top 10 except for Bristol two races ago. Stay with us. We're coming back. Yes, we've had road rage here at Richmond before. Was that on Rusty? R -R I think it was. Yeah. Such a nice guy. A hundred laps to go here, and we're under our fourth caution. And we've got a few hot tempers out there, including Brian Scott in the 11. Yeah, this is just close racing on a restart, and I think Eric Almirola just didn't anticipate well enough, you know, what was happening in front of him. Here's the view from behind. Back behind. Stay down here. Stay down. Y'all good. Keep coming low. And here's what Eric Almirola had to say on the radio after that. I didn't mean to do that. I tried to race in the turn. I tried to race in there with a 31, and uh, he stopped way sooner than I thought he should have. So as so many times happens, misjudgment causes some big results. Yeah. Well, we saw the temper of Brian Scott, and. Uh, Let's bring in Rusty Wallace. I, that, that was you, if I remember correctly there, guy. Well, it's just, that was just me and Gordon having a little prop back in the old days, you know. It was just, that was a lot of fun. But I will tell you, these restarts, guys, are really creating a lot of tempers because, like Dale and Andy said, you really get boggled up getting down into turn one and turn three and restarts. You're not single file. You're side by side. You kind of lose a little bit of depth perception, and you sail those babies off down in there. If the guy doesn't continue on as fast as you're going, sometimes you have a little problem, and we're going to see this a lot more probably. Well, and let's reset some things for you. You're on board with Elliot Sadler, and look who's right alongside him, Ricky Stenhouse Jr. So there you've got uh, first and second in the points. They're going to be in row number two, and oh, by the way, they're fighting for $100,000 in the dash for cash. Up front, it's Kyle Busch and Carl Edwards. Where's Reed Sorensen, you say? He's going to restart 12. We're back to green flag. Somebody way slow right at start finish. Like Danny McMurray. 
everybody cleared safely. And you're right, it is the one of Jamie McMurray. Doc, what are you hearing? Well, twice in the last 25 laps, McMurray has had to come down pit road when the coil wire has vibrated loose. They had to come in the last time and try to tire up it back in position. They think it's possibly an ignition. Maybe the thing is vibrating. It is not firing completely from an ignition standpoint. Oh, he stays out on the racetrack, but he is definitely not up to speed. And I'm surprised he did not pull down onto pit road because the field is approaching quickly. Well, it took off like it was going to run for a minute and then stopped again. Well, there goes your leader, Kyle Busch. As he's ahead of Carl Edwards, Ricky Stenhouse Jr., Elliot Sadler, and Kenny Wallace has stayed in that top five. Yeah, you think Kenny, you talk about those other two guys battling for $100,000. You think Kenny Wallace and this team couldn't use a $100,000 payoff? And remember, the top four finishers, nationwide regulars, in this race, along with the guy who wins it, so the other three, they move on to the Charlotte event. So he would be eligible for that right now. Battle for the lead as Carl Edwards has gotten right back up. It's amazing. It takes him a couple of laps to get those tires up. It's exactly what we saw the last time. I guess some time, though, Kyle held on just a little bit longer. Well, and the other thing you've noticed twice now, as the, as the run has progressed, the 60, the 16, not as much brake rotor lighten up as we have seen in, like, the 18 and some of these other cars. Yeah, that's what I've seen as they run a, a good long stretch. You'll see that 60 car, his... His rotors will be completely cool. You won't see any color. And I've seen a ton of color in that 18 car rotor. We'll let you know the one of Jamie McMurray has limped into pit road, so he is out of harm's way. And look at Carl as he's got a nose in front of the 18, but here comes Kyle right back. And Kyle really hanging tough on that high side right now. Never really seen a car hang this long on the, the top side. See Kenny Wallace trying to take that fourth spot from Elliott Sadler to on the right side of your screen. Those two on the left, between them, have won a total of five. Oh, got a car in the wall. It's Eric McClure. And a tough break for Eric as he has uh, hit the wall in turn number four. Caution is out. Fifth time today. The front slow. Don't let that thing come apart and make any more damage than he got. Go below. Go down. Way by the yellow line there. All right, while well, we got a chance, let's check in with Dave Burns. Yeah, standing by with Brian Scott now, who walked out, appears to be okay, but not attitude-wise. I know you're pretty angry at the 88. <laughs> yeah, you know, he's uh, he's ran in the back of me a couple times on restarts. Bristol comes to mind. And uh, I, don't, I don't know what it is, but when you, get, when you turn somebody, before you get into the corner, you hit the outside wall pretty hard. It was a tough hit. Killed our killed our car. We weren't having the night that we wanted with our number 11, Sherlock's Toyota. Guys are doing an awesome job on pit road, keeping us in the game. Kevin was making good adjustments. We were starting to hit on it, but now we're not going to see how our night ends. Ryan Scott out of this race. His crew told me last week, boy, this kid can really push the button, but if we could just get some luck, none tonight, Marty. Well, he has one top 10 in his last 13 races. That gives you an idea of just how frustrating a season has been for Brian Scott. Let's go back and show you what happened to Eric McClure that brought out our fifth caution. So he blew a tire. See sparks flying before he gets to the corner. There's the aftermath. It's almost like that tire was going down, coming down the back straightaway. He was running 22nd. Mike Wallace will get the lucky dog. He was the first car a lap down. That will give us a total of 19 cars back on the lead lap, and they're still having to go out and pick up the 14. He obviously ran over something because they hadn't run long enough for that brake heat to really melt a bead or anything like that. So I'm sure it was just a case where he ran over something and cut that tire down. Well, it's been 20 laps since our last pit stop. Uh, pit lane is closed. You can see that with the flag waving over to the right there. Does anybody come? Well, track position being pretty important. Uh, they're inside of a pit window, though. They could make it from here. It'd be a good opportunity to make that stop, and I think you'll see them do it. At least you'll see some of them do it. You have to wonder if somebody like Trevor Bain, who's back in 11th now, actually lost a couple of spots. He was really having a tough time. If indeed they do decide to come down pit road, he might look at two tires to get some track position yeah. back. Yeah, there'd be a chance for him to pull a little bit of strategy. And you know, only run just a few laps, not that many green flag laps. You don't really want to pivot. When you look at that laps to go and that number is lower than your, than your uh, pit window, 
got to think about it. You got to really consider coming down at least getting fuel. Well, I'm looking down it's through. It's green the... now. We'll see anybody who comes. Yep. Yeah, Pit road down. is open. We see everybody passing on it. First taker. It looks like it's going to be the 32 of Reed Sorensen, so he peels off from 10th position. And we'll find out uh, just what happens when we come back to Richmond. Where winners are celebrated, champions are crowned, and legends are born. Home with the biggest events in motorsports, ESPN and ABC. And while we've got a moment, let's talk about what's coming up. NASCAR Now, presented by 5 Hour Energy, tomorrow morning, 9 a.m. Eastern on ESPN2. Our Spring Cup Series race from here at Richmond, tomorrow, 7 Eastern on ABC. Then NASCAR Now, tomorrow night, 11 Eastern on ESPN2. And then our next stop on the Nationwide Series, Chicago, next Saturday, 3 Eastern on ESPN2. The 30 of Ricky Carmichael, too fast entering, so he'll have to pay the price on that. And uh, you heard Brian Scott taking the 88 of Eric Almirola to task. And between uh, that and what we saw with uh, a little sheet metal talking between the 88 and the 16. Let's go back and show you what we mean. From the view of 32 of Reed Sorensen. Now they've been fighting over some space. and Outside 16. We're ready to roll on the 88 here. Like that that was during the racing, but then after the caution came out here, I think uh, Trevor Bain was a little unhappy with something that Eric Almirola had done. Put a over here. Swipe at him here. So we'll see if that continues to foment. Still cleaning the track. We'll let you know that Jason Leffler is back out. 32nd position. He's 70 laps down. And remember, right now he's not real happy with Kevin Harvick, who's running in sixth. Ready to go back to green flag racing. Since the last round of major pit stops by our leaders at lap 141, we've had 22 laps of caution. Do you think we can go the distance now, Andy? Well, I think all those leaders can go now with all those laps of caution. That's why you didn't see them come down pit road. Only Reed Sorensen did. Because they feel like they can make it. I'll make it from here. Kyle Busch took the inside. He's got Carl Edwards. Then Kenny Wallace is up to third. Stenhouse right alongside in fourth. And here we go. Oh, Elliot Sadler has some ideas of making it three wide down the front straightaway. Now Stephen Wallace trying to take the spot from him. And he's got Kevin Harvick, his boss, right behind him in the 33. Sadler sees that six car just two ahead of him, and he knows what it means in more ways than one. The points championship and $100,000 to the top finisher between he, Stenhouse, and Reed Sorensen. And Stephen Wallace says, I don't care about that. I'm going to take the position. Well, Stenhouse still looks like he's the best of those cars that have that opportunity at that 100,000 right now. But we have a lot of racing to go. Look at uh, Reed Sorensen in the 20. He started dead last in the field. Or Ryan Truex, I'm sorry, in the 20. And now side by side with the 88. As up front, you saw Carl Edwards taking a peek under Carl Busch. So Carl still holding on. But here comes Carl again. His tires take a few laps, as we've seen, after every restart. Side by side, here comes Carl. Can he close it this time? Right side of your screen, it's Truex in the 20. Side by side with Trevor Bain. Trevor Bain made a spectacular three wide pass, get into one, and now Truex trying to come back. Officially, Carl Edwards led at the stripe, so that's our ninth lead change. There's Eric Almirola now getting into that mix for the battle for eighth on the right side. Well, you can see just where Carl Edwards is so good, able to get back in the gas hard next to the corner. Really was able to make that pass look pretty easy on, Paul, on Kyle Busch right there. The view from high above. Trevor takes it deeper. Whoa, and there's a little contact between the two. 
Bain makes a nice recovery, but it's going to cost him two spots. Yeah, it looked like Trevor didn't give Truex enough room to get into one. He had to use up a little more track than what he was left. Almirola gets around him as well, so bumping back two positions. Now he's going to take another peek underneath Almirola. And he quickly clears him. Then there's Reed Sorensen in the 32. Remember, he too, the third man left in this battle for the dash for cash. I'm sure uh, Trevor's just really frustrated because he had one of the best cars, if not the best car, and it was really bracing Carl Edwards for the win. Had a bad pit stop and puts him back in the pack, and he's not nearly as good as he was. Sorensen, who has not really cracked the top five tonight, has been sort of mired in that 10th, 11th, 12th position. Still battling his way, trying to get there. Let's get an update on that 32. Vince, what are you hearing? Well, Reed Sorensen has been looking for some more grip throughout the course of this race. Just hasn't had the drive off that he's wanted. But two stops ago, they made a wedge adjustment. He said it's getting a little bit better. So they went and made a little further adjustment in that wedge. The last time he came through on, uh, when everybody else stayed out and Sorensen came for fuel and tires. So they're trying to get that car better so he can keep moving up, Marty. All right, thanks, Vince. And uh, Sorensen right now, as you saw, six seconds behind the race leader and the two guys he's chasing Stenhouse in third Elliot Sadler in seventh this is that battle for eighth position with Ryan Truex and Trevor Bain in the 16 with Eric Almirola in the 88 and then Sorensen Jamie Bain, before we went green there, guys, he came on the radio complaining about Ryan Truex blocking him. So he's had this pent-up frustration. The team, Chad Norris, his crew chief, talking him down, telling him just to be calm, to be mature and learn something here. It's been tough with Trevor Bain as he goes to the inside of the 20. Marty. Side by side through the corner, and it looks like he will be able to clear him. So he takes over that eighth spot. Yeah, he's got a really, really good car. He, he just ha does have to be patient here. Hope that he gets a, another chance to pick off some of these other cars. But he has a much faster car, especially as the laps want get on the tires. Trevor Bain seems like that his car doesn't lose as much speed to some of these others. While those bad guys continue that battle for the eighth position and on back through for the next four spots, here's the race leader, Carl Edwards. He's led a whole total of 128 of our 184 laps. We've got 66 to go. Our race presented by Jack Daniel. Richmond and the NASCAR Nationwide Series race, the Virginia 529 College Savings 250. Make sure you go to NASCAR.com for all of your latest NASCAR information. We are 190 laps in. Let's go down to Jamie. Stephen Wallace is on pit road. They cannot get any luck. they finally making their way up. they back in seventh where they started, and they had a flat right rear. Had to pit and take four tires. They got to charge their way back up through. Nicole. Such a disappointing night for Stephen Wallace. He'd been running in the top ten most of the night. In fact, it's been a good night for the last name Wallace. Kenny Wallace started fifth. He's been in the top five most of the night. Brad, right now, he's running fourth. Kenny's doing an outstanding job. And if you remember last time we were here in April, Kenny was running fourth on lap 246 when he pitted too soon and was penalized and ended up finishing 13th, I believe it was. But he is he is strong at this racetrack. We could see Kenny Wallace in victory lane here tonight. For more on the 09, Dave. Well, of course, he's got nine nationwide victories, seven of them on short tracks, three of them right here at Richmond. And he told me today that crew chief Scott Zipidelli will, quote, drive me into the ground, demanding that I take a line that the crew chief Scott wants to see. He told me that coming off the corner, like right there, he wanted Kenny to exit lower. The only way that he could do that was backing up his corner entry. And when he did that, they found out that the car was much better than both of them thought. So Scott and Kenny working very well, trying to get him to get another win here. Nicole. Another guy that we're watching happens to be 
the guy that's tied for most wins in this series at this track. That's Kevin Harvick. He has five wins here. He's also in fifth. Yeah, he's doing pretty good right now. He's, he's recovered from his frustration earlier. He was really upset the way the car was handling. It's much better right now. I'm looking at his lap times are pretty good, and he's up to fifth right now, and he seems like he's calmed down a little bit now. Picking him off one by one. Jamie? Yes, well, we played that radio early on. That was one hot driver. He said that was the worst car, fundamentally wrong. Everything was wrong. It was going to be a long night. But Chris Carrier laughed and said, hey, it's like being married for a long time. No offense, but he's been working on the car and said everything is good. Car is coming around. This is the best he has been all night. Nicole? Marty, it's always a good sign when the driver has a bit of humor in the car. <laughs> and Kevin has been known to fire off a few, as there is uh, the man that drives for him, and the two of Elliot Sadler. Sadler in sixth, eight seconds behind the race leader, more importantly, six seconds behind the man he's chasing in the championship, Ricky Stenhouse Jr. Man chasing for that $100,000. Vince, let's get an update on that two car. Well, and if his boss, Kevin Harvick, was unhappy early, Sadler is unhappy now because he just does not have a car that he feels like he can work with. Work with. He said it's worse this run, almost like the right front is flat. He said the set of tires just doesn't feel right. Sometimes you just get that set that doesn't work with what you got, and right now that's what Elliott Sadler's dealing with, Marty. All right, thanks, Vince. As uh, these guys continue, let's update you on Stephen Wallace because he came back out one lap down after that pit stop for the uh, flat tire. He's 21st, and uh, ahead of him, also one lap down, Danica Patrick, Brad Keselowski in 19th. And there is Stephen as he continues to try to fight his way back. So, Carl Edwards is still your race leader. Kyle Busch and Ricky Stenhouse Jr., that's your top three. Our race presented by Jack Dan. NASCAR Nationwide Series in Richmond, presented by Jack Daniels Tennessee Whiskey. Live freely, drink sensibly, and in part by Mother's Polish. There's no shine like Mother's. Under the lights at Richmond International Raceway. Let's get you caught up in case you're just joining us. Our race leader is Carl Edwards. He has led a total of 150 laps. And uh, Kyle Busch, second on that list with 49 lead changes now and five total cautions for a total of 39 laps. And Ricky Stenhouse Jr., our points leader in the championship, he is currently running third and in line to pick up the $100,000 bonus for the dash for cash. There you see Carl Edwards going around Ricky Carmichael, he is 27th, now five laps down. And the 38 is back out and got passed or is getting very yeah. close to being passed by the 33 of Kevin Hart. Uh, Kevin tried to pass him off turn two, and I looked like he may have brake checked him a little coming off the corner. I saw some smoke fly. And it looks and like there's Trevor some damage Bang on was, Trevor Bang. Yeah, he got, yeah, he got, got the him. worst end of that deal. He was had chased him down and guy that was running as high as second. That. Take a look. Here's what happened. Oh. So let's get an update on the 16, an innocent victim here, Jamie. Oh, my gosh. Marty, right before that happened, his crew just warned him. The 38 is waiting for the 33 for a payback. And right then, boom, he hits the back of him. And Trevor said, this is awful. These beat up guys may be coming down here. They're watching the temps right now on the 16. And for Trevor, only two top 10 finishes in the last 11 races, including three DNFs. And this one, no fault of his own. And she is now side by side with Harvick. And Harvick has gotten past the 38. Whoa, and look out, there's trouble there. And now Harvick retaliates into the 16. Caution flag is out again. And I guess Trevor's up, leader Trevor. was pegged. Hold it up there. Yeah, that's all you. frustration, every bit of that. It's just a shame to see that for Trevor. He had a great yeah, I'm now. fine, but this, I'm just over wrecking cars because we can't get out of the pit. It's a reference to that pit stop that cost him seven spots. He was second when he came in. He came back out in ninth. Let's go back and show you exactly what happened here. Our sixth caution of the night. See, he may have, Trevor may have got into Harvick there, got Harvick in the wall. Harvick says, okay, take that. Let's get 
another angle on this. Yep, that's what I saw. Not any doubt. All right, let's listen in on the radio as we look at the perspective of the 33. Now he got into me and I got loose and then wound up hitting him. From that, it doesn't sound like he's saying I deliberately. That's what I'd have said it. too, maybe. I don't know. <laughs> it's not what happened, but there's well, no doubt that he got loose and up against the wall, but he didn't have to come off the wall to hit six. That's just frustration with what he was going through with the 38. <laughs> And I'm wondering, I think that's the same thing with Trevor. I think Trevor was just frustrated with Harvick and get caught up in his situation. Yeah, he saw an opportunity to go, and he made that. And, yeah, he got into Harvick just a little bit. So, you know, it's hard, short track racing, just like we talk about. And tempers are going to flare. So what started out as an incident between the 38 and the 33, Leffler and Harvick ends up doing damage to the 16 of Trevor Bay, where he gets his nose stuffed. And then it just escalated from there. And it all started a lot earlier in this race. When Harvick and Leffler got together, here we go. Leffler felt like Harvick took him out. Yeah, and Harvick felt like that the 38 had slowed down, whether it was something in front of him or not, that slowed him down. He just wasn't anticipating that happening. So when uh, Leffler put it all back together, he came back out 70 laps down. He's now 71 behind in 32nd spot. And we just documented what happened there when he brake checked Harvick. And yeah, look at Harvick looking back, wondering if Leffler's going to do anything. Just keep an eye on Pit road is still closed because uh, Trevor Bain's car is still in the entry area. On board with Jason. Comes Harvick to pit road anyway to do some work on his race car. Yeah, the pit road's closed, but the penalty is have to start at the rear. He just needs to get in and get his car worked on. Here he comes, Jamie. Yeah, pit road is closed, and Kevin Harvick wants to get this damage fixed. Now, he says his car got loose because of the 16. And you see him going to work on the right side. They're going to take right side tires only to focus on the damage. You see him knocking the spoiler down in the back. They've got their hammers out. Plus, they're working on the splitter up front, and they are going to town. A lot of damage on that right side of the car. Raced his way all the way up into fifth, guys. And uh, bad place to be, I guess, for the 16 and the 33. All right, let's get you a different perspective on this uh, last incident. How about from high above? This is going into turn one. You see Trevor Bain saw an opportunity. He was on the outside here. Had a little bit of run, but Harvick's cleared right there. Trevor was trying to cut back under him. May have gotten into Harvick a little bit. Now, that's not loose. I'm sorry, folks. You believe Harvick or what we're watching there. Here's the view from Leffler's car. Watch this. Watch this. Come on, sir. Watch this. And that's what's left of the 16 being hauled back to the garage area. I think a lot of the frustration for Trevor, though, is losing all the spots on pit road. Yeah, and, and all of it goes back. He would have never been in that position if they hadn't had the, the bad pit stop. And uh, once he got back there, it just like the frustration level was a little too high for him. And, you know, we saw him get in a couple of different scenarios where it was tough for him. Coming to pit road now. Carl Edwards leads the way here on lap number 216. Dave? To be a four-time winner here, Kyle Busch thinks his car needs to be a little tighter at the beginning. They'll get the same wedge and track power adjustment they got last time, four tires, Sunoco fuel. Kenny Wallace gives up the fourth position. He'll get no changes to his car except four fresh tires and full of fuel. Vince. Carl Edwards up the right-hand side of your screen. If it ain't broke, don't fix it. Four tires, no changes for the man who's dominated this race. Doc. Next car, Ricky said house needs bite off, needs drive off, right rear, half a round out. This could be a $100,000 pit stop. UPS Cup crew gets him down of the way. 14.8 seconds, guys, pit stop. The race off pit road, Kyle Busch with the best pit stop as he picks up one. So does Ricky Stenhouse Jr. 
Ryan Truex picks up three. Carl Edwards, you saw the length on that pit stop. He drops three. So does Kenny Wallace. And Justin Allgaier picks up three as well. Back here at Richmond International Raceway. 32 laps to go. We are under our sixth caution. And we can tell you, Mike Wallace gets the lucky dog. Several cars are getting the wave around right now. We'll get those numbers for you. The 28, the 39 of Martinez, Stephen Wallace on the 66, Blake Cook and Danica Patrick. They all take the wave around, get back on, for some of them, the lead lap. Mike Wallace, Steve Wallace, Danica Patrick. There you see the cars up front. Kyle Busch, Ricky Stenhouse Jr. Ryan Truex is now listed in third. Carl, what a comeback for this young man after starting dead last in the field. Carl Edwards, fourth. Eric Almirola, fifth. Elliot Sadler in sixth. And Kenny Wallace, after a rough pit stop, drops back to seventh. And where is the 38 of Jason Leffler? As we're getting ready to go back to green flag racing. Leffler back in the pack there, as is Kevin Harvick, because he had to move back and start the rear of the field and boy a great restart for the 18 of Kyle Busch. That car will fly for about three or four laps. The only difference this time is Carl Edwards isn't going to be the guy right up underneath him. Might be good news for Kyle. Yeah, that's the key. Kyle's car has been getting better and better on these longer runs. It's been really fast, as Andy said, for three or four laps here, but he's getting a little bit of a lead built up now. There is Carl as he's trying to get around Ryan Truex on the high side. What a great job Ryan Truex has done tonight. Coming up through traffic from the very back of the field. Got himself up here in a great spot fourth right now. Elliot Sadler on the outside there of Al Marola. And there's Kenny Wallace right behind him. And Reed Sorensen in that mix. First time I think Sorensen's cracked the top ten tonight. He's up to eight. Yeah, and Al Marola, he's just been able to manufacture a lot of good finishes, too. He's been in the middle of a lot of things happening tonight. There he is, up in the top five right now. While all this action goes on, Jamie Little is caught up with Trevor Bain. Very frustrated Trevor Bain, been top four all day in practice and qualifying, ran as high as second tonight. Trevor, what happened with you in the 33 and the 38? Well, it's just pretty frustrating to begin with because we were second all night, had a very fast race car, had a contention to win, and, um, you know, we had a bad pit stop again. Same thing that took us out of it last week. We lost eight spots on pit road, come out 12th or 11th or wherever, and uh, we get wrecked again. So it's, you know, our own fault a little little bit but then with the 38 and 33 I just say we got caught up in somebody else's mess you know the 38 and 33 were mad about whatever uh, before that you know I run down the 33 and the two from a straightaway back get to the 33 he lets the two car go and then pulls down to block me uh, I'm sure it's because the two's running for a championship but uh, it's just not good when you get blocked like that and then get caught up in their mess because they want to wreck each other and then then he intentionally wrecked us going into three so it's pretty frustrating Harvick's always raced me really well and uh, I don't really know what happened tonight but it's it's definitely frustrating for us, and I hate that our cars turned up and we had a shot to win it tonight. And Trevor Bain's team didn't make two changes on their pit crew this weekend, guys, and they just struggled. Dropped the spots, and you heard him say it. That's the reason why. His fifth DNF of the year as this action continues out on track, and there goes the 9 of Kenny Wallace as he gets around Eric Almirola. So Kenny Wallace trying to fight his way back. He's up into the top five. The battle for 12. How about this ride that David Stremme has given this 70 car tonight as he has got Michael Lynette outside him there. Michael Lynette doing a good job here tonight, too. He almost was involved, had to stop to keep from hitting Brian Scott when he got turned. So doing a really good job, as is Stremme. Right. Well, you guys hit the nail on the head with David Stremme, and Stremme's doing that with a little damage on the left front, so it's really been arrow tight as you see him pull up side by side with Michael Lynette. So despite the fact that the car has been tight throughout almost the entire night, he still managed to get it done. So the 70 and ML Racing giving Stremme a good car tonight, and Stremme's up on the wheel. And you see the 22 of Brad Keselowski right behind him. That is not for position. Keselowski is one lap down in the uh, lucky dog position. He is running 20th. There's Jeremy Clements in a 51 car running this group down, too, having a great night. Clements is 14th on the track. And behind Clements is Mike Wallace. And here we go side by side. Elliot Sadler and Eric Almirola as that's the battle for sixth. Sandler trying to clear him and does. 
Sandler has top 10 finishes in five of the six short track races this year. Most importantly, though, he's got to find a way to get up to Stenhouse Jr. Yeah, he's going to have a solid night here if everything goes accordingly here to the end, but he's still going to lose points. This guy he's trying to chase down into points, Ricky Stenhouse having a great night up in second. Right now, the gap would be 17 based on where they're running. Reed Sorensen would be 46 points behind. There is Ricky. He's a half a second behind Kyle Busch. Let's get the latest on Stenhouse. How about it, Doc? Remember the beginning of the night when Mike Kelly told Ricky Stenhouse, think of the big picture, buddy. We're thinking about a points championship, $100,000, and a lot more tonight. He said, be smooth. Now, if the 60 gets there and gets beside you, and he's got a better car, let him go. Let him go, because we got to think about the big picture, which includes a championship and a lot of money from Nationwide. Okay. And Doc, Kyle Busch only has one picture. That's winning races in the Nationwide Series. His crew chief, Jason Ratcliffe, told me today, what are their strengths is communication telling what's going on remember Kyle's not been happy with his car all night but they've been tweaking it little by little and remember the last run he wanted it to be a little bit tighter on the get-go so that he could manhandle a little, little, little bit and it loosened more over time a better longer run car and so far it looks like they've achieved that Marty all right Dave I, I want to go back to the words of wisdom to Ricky Stenhouse <laughs> because I remember a few races ago where you know he was a little aggravated with Carl yeah but I also think Think those were words of motivation because he's not letting Carl Edwards get to him to, to let him go. <laughs> well, I have to agree that's a good strategy. If Carl does get to his rear bumper and is really pushing for that spot, he's got too much to lose to try to fight him off. And uh, you know, the championship, the hundred thousand. As long as he can keep a gap right like he's got, just okay, keep hammer down. Just 15 laps to go, and here comes here he Carl. Comes. Yep. Yeah, I start to see Ricky kind of overdrive maybe the corners just a little bit. He kept getting a little bit harder and harder into the corner. So he lost that. Now he's let Carl go. So he'll go up here and see if he can follow Carl by Kyle Busch if they can catch him. I don't know. I think Kyle Busch has got something going this run. And that's Kevin Harvick in the 33 going a lap down. So our winner here last year not going to repeat. Vince, what are you hearing on that 60 car? Well, they're really unhappy because Carl Edwards has had the dominant car throughout much of this night. He's led 160 laps, but when they came in for that last pit stop and he slammed on the brakes, it pinned the front of the nose. And because of the way the shock reacted, they couldn't get the tire off through the right tire well. And that slowed down their stop. They lost three positions in the pits. That's the only thing that's kept Mike Beam and Carl Edwards down tonight because they have been real good on the, on the track. The margin to first place is 1.1 seconds. Kyle Busch, we've talked about this, I don't know, countless times. They did not have a good car in practice, but he and Jason Radcliffe worked so well together, you know by night's end, they're going to be there. Here they are, leading 12 to go. But I think right there, the Carl Edwards, they gave a little bit away on the setup. Got a lot of, <laughs> lot of rebound in that right front shot. Yeah. <laughs> if, that, if that slowed the pit stop down. Like Carl's catching him just a little bit. He beat him uh, right, almost two tenths that time. He was fastest car that last lap. Kyle Busch was second quick, Stenhouse third. It's got to be hard here in this situation like Carl to really be disciplined and not overdrive your car when you're trying to catch somebody, Dale. I don't know uh, what it's like, you know, when you're in this situation, but it seemed like it'd be easy to overdrive it. And it, just like last lap, Edwards is the quickest, and it's down to eight tenths of a second. Yeah, you're exactly right about that, Andy. It is easy to overdrive, and this is a racetrack, once again, that is easy to overdrive because it looks like you've got so much room to just drive it off in the corner. So especially when you're trying to catch someone, get that little bit of extra out of it, you can just make it too hard, slide the nose in the corner, and let get back to the throttle then. Nine laps to go. Danica Patrick about to go a lap down again. She's running in 18th position. It makes it even harder to run someone down like Kyle Busch, who rarely makes a mistake out there. You know, he's very much in control of his race car, and he just doesn't slip. And now with Carl trying to deal with lap traffic, the gap right now is seven-tenths of a second. And you can see it has closed. But there's eight laps to go. Gets around Morgan Shepard. He is four laps down in 24th. And here comes Carl. 
Morgan gives him plenty of room. The battle will continue. Next time by, six laps remaining. They've got about three seconds till they catch the next lap car. The gap holding steady at that last lap at seven tenths of a second. Running virtual laps right there, just about the same. Yep. One thing we do know, when Carl has led the most laps this year, he has won all six times that that has happened. He's led the most laps tonight, but the laps are running out. Yeah, I'm watching Carl Edwards right now. He's driving harder into the corner than he has all night. We haven't seen any brake heat or anything like that from Carl's car, but he is really diving off in the corner right now, trying to make up his time, getting a little closer. Next time by, four laps remaining. As far as the dash for cash is concerned, Stenhouse Jr. in control right now, running in third. Sadler is sixth. Sorensen is eighth. While this battle has sort of subsided, this one is picking up a little bit. That is the 20 of Ryan Truex. He is fourth. Kenny Wallace is closing in his fifth position. And Elliott Sadler right behind in the two. They've got a nice battle here. Kenny Wallace has actually caught Ryan Truex a little bit ago. Got up to his quarter panel, but has had to settle back and uh, hasn't been able to get back to his bumper since. Three laps to go. It is a down to a half a second up front. And that's what it looks like on the racetrack. Here comes Carl. But does he have enough time? We're going to catch a couple of lap cars here in these last two laps. Coming up on Kevin LePage in the 52. And Leffler gives way as well. And next time by, it'll be the white flag. The gap is still at a half a second. Time is going to be right here. Just one more lap. Kyle Busch was not happy with this race car at the beginning of this day. Did a nice job in qualifying and has worked along with Jason Radcliffe and his crew. And here he comes. Kyle Busch is going to make it look easy. His 51st career win with Carl Edwards second. Third place to Ricky Stenhouse Jr. who picks up the nationwide dash for cash. And look at how close it is there. Ryan Truex fourth. Kenny Wallace fifth. Elliot Sadler comes home in sixth. And there you see the rest of the top ten across the top of the screen. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. It's a top ten. Good job. Oh, you guys, way to dig it in. Good job, Jake. His eighth win of 2011. Most of all drivers in the series. Let's talk to Jason Radcliffe. How about it, Dave? Celebrating with his driver, talking about how many Rowdy Bushes won in the series now. 51. That's a big number. You guys weren't there in the middle of the race, and you got it there. No, we weren't. Uh, big thanks to the Z Line Design team tonight on Pit Road. These guys did a well of a job. I mean, good pit stops. And I ask a lot of them every stop. We had wrenches in the back when I had a lot of air pressure stuff going on. Kyle hung in there, kept communicating well. Um, but like you mentioned, we probably had a third place car to start the night. We just kept getting better, kept getting better, and uh, man, the pit crew did what they needed to do at the end, and of course Kyle Busch did what he did, needed to do there at the end. Of course, we got to remember, uh, you know, all of our, all of our military and all of our armed service people that that uh, give us the freedom to come out here and do this, especially on this weekend, as we think about all the all the great people that uh, that we'll miss, and then all the great people that. They stood up and were very courageous to go out and do what they did, and they continue to do it today, and that's the freedom that we have to come out here and race, so I'm very thankful for that. Thanks, Jason. Great thought, and here's one more, Marty. Never bet against the 18. That's for sure, Dave. As there he is with the checkered flag. 51 in that collection right now from the Nationwide Series. The 34th time that he and Jason Radcliffe have teamed up to take that first place prize. How about the Dash for Cash winner, Ricky Stenhouse Jr. Doc? 
All right, Ricky Sidhouse in here getting uh, Ricky winning $100,000 in Dash for Cash. I mean, you had a big, big picture tonight thinking about the point standings and the Dash for Cash, and you were able to excel on both. Congratulations. Thank you. Yeah, we, um, you know, obviously we needed to finish ahead of the guys that uh, we were racing for in points. And, uh, you know, try, and we got that Dash for Cash, which is really cool, but. Um, you know, I thought we had a little bit for Kyle there at the end. Just, uh, I tried. Um, thought we had a little bit there for Kyle. Man, it started off really good. We were kind of running him down and uh, just lost forward grip. Um, just not near as good as I think we have been here in the past. But, uh, you know, we had Flight 93 on here, and, and we want to remember all the in 9-11. Uh, it was a tragic day, and uh, just glad that, uh, you know, we still got our freedom to come out here and race. But uh, it was a tough battle, but uh, definitely glad that uh, Nationwide is, is doing this uh, dash for cash because uh, it pays pretty good. And on top of the $100,000 from Nationwide, his, now, his point lead is now 16 points, so he continues to add to it. And by the way, he was smiling a moment ago. That was, uh, that was Carl Leverage who came down to say hello. Let's go up and talk with him with Vince. Tell you what, he had the dominant car throughout much of the night tonight. Led 160 of the 250 laps, but you came in on for that last pit stop and uh, lost three spots. What happened there? Uh, they had a little bit of trouble with the right front tire. It was up in the fender well. They said, my guys are, are the best pit crew on pit road. They put me out front almost every stop. So, you know, this is just racing, but, man, this, this fast and all Mustang was so good. And uh, I got to thank Ricky. You know, he didn't hold me up. You know, when I was coming there at the end, he, he let me at least have a shot at Kyle, but... Those guys earned it. They got faster all night, and we had a little bit of trouble. Uh, you know, it's like our car went away just a little bit. How good was it during that stretch, though? Hey, it was pretty good. <laughs> that was pretty fun. I enjoyed that. Uh, I really did have a good time. And I got to say uh, thank you so much for Fast and All, you know, for them putting the Steven Siller Foundation on this car. What the Siller Foundation does is is builds homes for quadriplegic folks that, uh, that get hurt in battle over there, or, you know, our soldiers. And we've got, we've got John Peck on the deck lid, and we wanted to get this trophy for you really bad, John. We gave it our best effort in your honor. And second place is nothing to... Uh, you know, to be ashamed of, but this car was so fast. I, I wish uh, I wish we had one more caution, you know, get another shot at him, but Kyle did a really good job. Everybody raced clean and just had a fun night of racing. Just a little short tonight. Jamie? Well, we caught up with Kevin Harvick as he makes his way back to the cup garage. Up and down night started off, you were mad about the way that car handled, but you worked your way up to fifth. You guys worked on it, but then the 38 came into the picture. What in the world happened between you two? Well, I just made a mistake and got in there too fast and got in the back of him and turned him around. That was pretty much, um, you know, he had a right to be mad. And, and that was my fault and then uh, you know I tried to take my time and getting around him and, and uh, he brake checked me down there and, and I had to check up and the 16 got in the back of me and and then uh, a couple laps later the 16 got in the back of me and uh, got me into the fence with the right rear and the right front and as it came off the wall I turned him uh, you know just one of those deals and, and hate the way that uh, hate the way that it all turned out but uh, all in all it's Short track racing, I guess. It's watching the replay. Does anything change now that you're not the owner going back? You don't have to worry about the car anymore? I still own them for seven weeks. Oh, seven more weeks. He's still the owner on the race cars, Marty. <laughs> Great point, Jamie. And uh, Kevin still manages to find a smile on that. And let's check in now at one main financial victory lane because Kyle Busch has finally made it there. He's got a couple flat tires after burning them down, but here he comes. <laughs> Yeah, the car came in here looking a little uh, cattywampus, as they say, but that was a good thing based on what happened here tonight. You got the car there, and it wasn't there in the middle of the race. You and Jason were patient, and you stuck with it. Yeah, these uh, these guys, Jason Ratcliffe and these guys, you know, that's why we uh, just keep digging, you know, to keep trying to do what we can with these uh, Z-Line Designs Camrys, and I uh, can't say enough about this this team. And guys on pit road, Jason making all the adjustments tonight, you know, what a, a flawless job. And, uh, you know, again, Z-Line, Jim and Monica with us and uh, having fun and Nos Energy Drink, Toyota, uh, Nationwide Insurance, and uh, my smoking hot wife's around here somewhere, I think, so... <laughs> She didn't want to get wet over here. Yeah, she didn't want to get wet, but, uh, you know, thank Pizza Ranch, uh, Gillette, and uh, the fans, of course, too, and and uh, all of our lost that we've had on 9-11 uh, weekend. You know, this is for those, for those people and also for their families, but, um, you know, all the men and women serving across the country certainly means a lot to... Uh, to give us our freedom to come out here to have fun and enjoy it and to celebrate like this in times when it's good for us and uh, great for others. Yeah, they pick us up. And Kyle Bush picked up the 18 team tonight. Fourth win here at Richmond in the Nationwide Series. So the celebration will continue for Kyle Bush. As uh, we want to remind you, coming up next will be baseball tonight.
right here on ESPN2. Our ticket to the race as we'll head for Chicago next week. If you're in the area, hope that you'll come on out and say hello. And hit the events are winding down. Just seven to go. Go for Kansas, Charlotte, Texas, Phoenix, and we'll wrap it up at Homestead Miami Speedway. How about events? Let's talk to Kenny Wallace. First top five since 2008. How did you do it? We just hard work and perseverance. I want to thank Federated Auto Parts and my Toyota Camry. Uh, that's the key to it. You know, a team determined like me, losing weight and get physically fit. Mentally, this is a big comeback for me. I'm I'm excited. Yeah, great performance from Kenny and Scott Zipidelli, the crew chief tonight. Doc. And how about Ryan Truex here? 19 years old. You, now let's start. The night began. A car would car cranked and then cut off. You had to have a backup ignition. You start 42nd and finish fourth. I mean, that's pretty impressive. It helps when you got a good car. Um, you know, these guys at Joe Gibbs Racing just just work so hard, and they build such great race cars. And it's just it's just a pleasure to be able to drive them and be out there racing with these guys. And we started off and had to come from 42nd, like you said. And I just took my time. You know, was patient. Just made my way to the front. Like I said, we had an awesome car. Can't thank these guys enough. Um, Chick Extreme 3, got to thank them for being on board. Our car looked awesome. And uh, it's just a good night. I'm happy. This is all about learning and only your 19th career start, but what did you learn tonight? At the, you know, only your second ever start here at Richmond on the short track in a nationwide car. That's going to help you down the road. Yeah, yeah. Um, I think it helped me a lot with just tire strategy and being able to save my stuff. Um, you no know, long runs we were really good, and it was just for me saving the right rear the whole you know beginning of the run. We weren't the fastest car on short runs, but as we'd run and keep going and making laps, we'd start catching those guys. They'd all come back to us. So can't thank these guys enough, and just happy to be here. Well done, Marty. How about a bright future for this young man? Hey, he's also in the dash for cash at Charlotte. It'll be Ricky Stenhouse, Ryan, Kenny Wallace, and Elliot Sadler. $100,000 still up for grads. How about the points? Well, it's now 16, as Doc pointed out, between first and second, and now 45, all the way back to third for Reed Sorensen. So uh, time for the 32 team. They're going to have to really pick it up. Guys, quickly, final thought. Uh, great race there to the end. and just shows Kyle Busch and his team how good they are working on the car throughout the race. Sprint Cup Series action from Richmond tomorrow night here, 7 o'clock Eastern on ABC. Coming up next, it's baseball tonight. This has been a presentation of ESPN, the worldwide leader in sports. For entire ESPN crew, I'm Marty Reed. Till we meet again.